Good morning, everybody. March 2nd. We're already getting on it, aren't we? This time, this time's going by quick, you guys. So know this, that the Lord's going to, uh, he's right here. He's ready for us. Look at how long we've been waiting already, you guys. We know the time is at hand, and so does Satan. Now, you know how I've been sharing about how we need to try to do our walk more in the spirit? Excuse me, y'all, I just woke up. You know, I don't, I'd love to be able to walk into the restroom and splash water in my face, but that ain't what is happening here. But, uh, if you have a gym I can go get into, which I'm, I'm on my way, but I gotta go get me a cup of coffee first. I used to wake up in the morning and go to my coffee machine first thing, you know? Then I'd go to the shower, and that's how I ended up killing those snakes. You know, woke, woke up in the morning, 2001, walked out there. There was a snake right there, and I killed it, threw it out, made my coffee. And I was looking to see how it got in, couldn't find it. Yeah, I did my shower. Next morning came out, you know, there's another snake right there. Same spot, same size, everything. That's when things started happening for me, you know, the two snakes. And that's when the two twin towers went down. You know what I mean? The two twins? Well, those two snakes looked identical to me, too. They were both small. Um, anyhow, let me get onto the dream here. Last night, uh, Now this stream's gonna be a little bit different, you guys. I know everybody's gonna be expecting to hear something like from the Lord, but this one's from, uh, I'm gonna have to say from the devil. Um, remember how I'm always telling you guys we need to learn to walk in the spirit and not the flesh? And in the beginning when this started, with my dreams and stuff like that. A lot of them that I had where I was being attacked by the devil a lot. Um, the dreams were much stronger, okay? I've had to fight things like crocodiles, man, in rivers. And then the sex dreams and stuff like that, they were very uh, strong, powerful, powerful. And uh, now this was in the beginning, you guys. And when I'm saying the word powerful, it was because my walk, I was still walking in the flesh. And until I started realizing, you know, like even my coach, Mr. Uh, George Steele the Animal, when he passed away, he was my wrestling coach. And then we all know in Ephesians about putting on that full armor of God, what does it say about wrestling in there? We wrestle not with flesh and blood. And then as I'm talking about the spiritual walk, how we can do more of a spiritual walk, it gives it, the devil less hold on you. Um, yeah, last night they were trying to attack me again, you know, but they were weak, very weak, almost like as if they didn't have the power that they used to have. Um, very weak. It was almost like at a picture at a distance and they were getting smaller. Real small, you know, like harder to see. But I could see them, they were there. But it was like a lot further away. And that's why I say when we overcome these things, um, his power over us overcomes us as well. That's why Jesus says, sin no more. And uh, if you sin again, something worse can happen to you. And that's, they're here, they're around here, and they're waiting for you to get into the sin. Because that's how they have their hold on you. And, uh, when you, uh, that's why I'm saying walk in the spirit, you guys. It's a lot better. A lot of people here, it's all going right over their head, man. All of it. Um, scoffers, mockers coming against me. A lot of them, you know, the perverted lifestyle. Listen, I don't candy coat it. I don't call it what you want. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's stinking thinking. That's what it is. It's stinking thinking. 
And uh, where did I learn that, that phrase, stinking thinking? Alcoholics Anonymous, AA. Yes, that's right. Some of you guys probably heard of that. Called it stinking thinking, even drinking, all that. Well, it's all stinking thinking. People used to say, I wonder how come it's so successful? Why is it so successful? Well, because we had God, we had Jesus Christ in it. And we called it what it was, stinking thinking. That's how we overcame things. And the same thing applies here today. Why do you think they're trying to take Jesus Christ out of everything? You can't make it without him. Who are you going to follow when you take Jesus Christ? Because Jesus came here and he said, I came to overcome the world. He said, the devil's the ruler of this world. I came here to overcome the world. And then he said, follow me. You know, and when he left and he died, it was his spirit that was in us. And so we had to follow him in spirit. And by following him in spirit, um, we're not going to want to sin. You're not even going to think about it. Like I said, last night, this morning's message, the attacks that I had last night, they were the devil trying to get a hold on me. That's all it was. And you know what? I'd wake, wake up. You know where it says resist the devil and he will flee from you? I'd wake up and I would pray. That's what the Word of God tells us to do that. He'd pray without seizing. Let me show you guys this. I know the devil hates this, man. Da, da, da. There you go, man. Get you a real good look at it there because I know it just does just turns that devil all those demons boy did it bother them see there people are in a hurry yeah I'm slowing down for a light and this guy's running through a light running through a red light gotta hurry it up and get there I remember some poor girl man when I was younger in Tucson somebody in a rush um, girl was sitting out there on a the corner waiting for the light to change and it changed, so it was time for her to go. Boy, she took one, two steps off the corner and boom! Because somebody was in a hurry to get through that light. And uh, now people are really in a hurry. So this is the time where you really need to really slow down. Everything's going really, really fast. People are in a hurry. And... Uh, Like I said, when you're doing that walk more in the spirit, more aware, you know, awareness, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to want to sin when you're walking in the spirit, when you're walking with Christ. You're not going to want to, I promise you that. That's what I was telling that girl at the uh, store. Look at it. Here, you know, you guys talk about my t-shirts with skulls on them. I'm seeing them on vehicles everywhere. But I don't just see one, I see three. See, and three represents 666. Like that right there, okay? A lot of people, like yesterday, I see a lot of people going into that restaurant over here. And see, a lot of people here have gun permits. And uh, I see people with tattoos with uh, the highway sign that said 66, okay? Which we know 66 plus that man makes 666. And uh, my brother sent me an email. Um, and when I got his email, the first thing I seen was his email address, 66. And I'm going, oh, man. You know, people are, you know, it's everywhere today, you guys. It's everywhere. He's got power and control over, you know, devil's got it everywhere. Why? Because people are, most people are all in the flesh. They won't even try to walk in the spirit. See, when we try to walk in the spirit, what happens is uh, it, it lets the loose of the devil's hold on you. It, it cuts his hold on you when you try to walk in the spirit. Because, I mean, he needs that flesh. He's got to have you, uh, power over your flesh because of the things that are in the world are of the flesh. The Word of God says it. Here. All our answers are right in here, man. And I sure do wish the churches were uh, speaking about this. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. 
If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Okay, that's where the, the devil has power on you. And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father. Because the Father is spirit. He's spirit. But it is of the world. Okay. But I want you guys to know this and remember this now. Because we're underneath the new law now. Okay. Where Jesus came and by his blood were redeemed back to the Father. Okay. Um, no one had ever made it. Why? Because they're in the flesh. You know. When Jesus came he said now follow me. You know. Because <laughs> everybody was following the world. And that's why Jesus said, I came to overcome what's in the world. Okay? And he did. And he took all the sin upon himself. And he was without sin. And he had the keys to hell and everything. And then he said, follow me. Okay? Now he's gone. He left in the spirit. Now he's saying to follow him. Now how can we follow him? Surely we can't follow him in flesh, can we? But we can follow him in spirit. And see, last night, those attacks, man, it was like the dream. They were so far away, real far away. Sexual things. They were trying to show me, you know, lustful thoughts like uh, women in the nude, that kind of stuff. And um, you see, when I share these things, that loosens a hold. But if I want to keep these things secret and not talk about it, that's like, Giving the devil a stronghold on me. And I let him go immediately. You know. And see that's why I'm trying to tell you guys the same thing. Let him go. And walk in the flesh. Let these things go. Okay. And follow Christ in the spirit. Okay. When I say let him go. I don't mean you have to walk away from your homes and all that stuff. I'm just saying don't follow what's in the world. This is what it says. It says and the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abideth forever. And what did Jesus say about that? He said, those that do the will of my Father in heaven are my brothers, my sisters, and my mother. Okay? Little children, it is the last time. And ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Antichrist. And a lot of people are already trying to say to use this name instead of Jesus Christ. It's the same thing. You know? And it says... Antichrist will come, and they're already here. Uh, you know, you need to be careful. He said he went out from among us, and they had been... Uh, they went out from among us, but they were not of us. For if they were had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out. They, they might be made manifested that they were not all of us. Okay? But ye have an unction from the Holy One. So you guys know, you can feel what I'm saying in your spirit. You can feel it. And know it's coming from the Word of God. It's not me coming up with all this stuff. Um, these are the things that I'm doing and I'm just sharing them with you. And I believe that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay? And that's why the Lord put that angel above my head sounding that trumpet. Okay? And you see the bathtub at the end of the trumpet with the white horse? It means we have to be washed, make ourselves ready by the blood of Christ. Listen, you guys. <laughs> I got majorly attacked, man. Not last night. It's, it's a lot weaker now. But in the beginning, I was majorly attacked because they knew that I was here to do the will of our Lord, okay? And that's to get you guys the truth, to see what's going on. Because we're not getting the truth today. Because everybody's got itchy ears, wanting to get tickled. And we got to remember this too. Few of us are going to make it. When you hear all these people saying, once saved, always saved. You know, oh, you might lose a little bit in the kingdom of heaven, you know. But you'll be okay, you know. You'll probably, you'll, everybody's going. Every, this is what the word of God says. Word of God says few people are going to make it. Wide are the gates to hell. And narrow, narrow. And the only way you're going to be on that narrow path, I'm telling you right now, is by walking in the Spirit. By walking in the Spirit. If you're walking in the flesh, most people that you see today, 
because of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. It's this place is consumed with it. You know, we're forced to live in it. Man, there's a lot of wilderness out there. We don't have to be so crammed like we are because there's a lot more space out there. But the devil wants us all herded up in tighter areas. So there, that way he can keep the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. He can keep all these things where, you know, they're distracting you. You know what I'm saying? The time's upon us, you guys. It's, it's time, okay? This isn't how the Lord would have us be living like this. Um, here in uh, chapter uh, 222, 222, 222, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. This is in 1 John, okay? I'm sure some of you guys probably said, where is this 222? What chapter? You know, it's 1 John, chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, okay? That denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Okay, therefore let him abide. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye had heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also you shall continue in the Son and in the Father. See, because he said, those that see the Son see the Father. Because the Father is in the Son. You see what I'm saying? But if you don't see the Son, you won't see the Father. Okay? Because he came here to die for our sins. And that's why he was very clear about it. Don't let anybody lead you away from that. Okay? And they're going to... They're, they're, that's what they're going to do. They might come at you like, you know, acknowledging right, you know, right in sync with you. Then they're going to go... Right here is where they're going to try to steer you off. Okay? That's why I'm saying stay in the Spirit and stay in Christ. Stay in Jesus. Don't let anybody steer you away from that. And the rest, it's an unction. You'll have it because the Holy Spirit will be with you. And you'll feel it when people are trying to lead you away from it too. Okay? Remember, there's a reason why that angel's blowing that trumpet over my head, okay? There's a reason why it's there. And I ain't saying it boastfully, neither. I'm saying it like you need to know the truth. And remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right? That's what it says in Ephesians 6 when it tells us to put the full armor on, right? It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Then on the 16th, what happened? My wrestling coach died. You know? And then I shared his testimony on the video with you guys where you can see what it said and everything. And uh, his testimony was all about, you know, his career, his life in the world. The things that the flesh lusteth after. Okay, and he, what he did, it's not, um, it's normal, because that's what everybody's doing, including the churches, the pastors. They're talking about their lives, everything that they've had in the world that, the, that they say God has given them. And you guys just read what I said about First John chapter 2, verse 15, all the way through 22. He that lusts us in this world is not of the Father. Remember what I said, man. There's a lot of deception going on, man. They came in the churches a long time ago. In the, end, the Bible says in the end days, people will seek to have their ears tickled. Clearly, you can see this is happening now, right? God bless each and every one of you. I hope and pray that you get something out of my message. And uh, I'm going to go and get me a cup of coffee.